Hello, everyone. Welcome to my The Young and the Restless Homies official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. On The Young and Restless, Billy and Phyllis strategize. Nick and Maria welcome Sharon home as Daniel and Lucy worry where Heather has gone. Phyllis arrives into the Abbot Chancellor's office with a plant and tells Billy that she has been celebrating and that her children have put her in a great mood. Things seem to be improving for them. She brought a plan to infuse the space with positive energy. He inquires whether Summer harbors any resentment about her taking Chance's position. Phyllis says no, he is a cop and it is what he excels at. She expresses her desire to have Daniel work there, which would bring her great happiness. Billy is thinking about it, but they have other priorities right now. Phyllis and Billy go to the GCs, and she apologizes for doing somersaults about her children and life while Billy's isn't going well. She reminds him that Adam has punched him and Victor is seeking his firm. He is concerned about what this may mean for his children. Phyllis urges that he reconsider Victoria's offer to buy him out. He informs her that this is not about money, but about preserving his mother's heritage. He's motivated to prove his critics incorrect. She supports him, but threatens that if Victor wins, he will publicly disgrace him. She wonders if he's doing this for the excitement or for his children's future. He assures her that his children are his most essential priority, and he has a plan. Victoria, like him, feels deeply about the children and opposes violence. He intends to use this to his advantage. She wonders whether he truly believes he can convert her against her father. He's astonished when she says he's using his kids to take advantage of Victoria. He claims he's just trying to get her to help him. She assures him that he has her support, but is concerned that his emotional state may impair his judgment as he prepares for a life-changing fight. He thinks he's never felt better prepared. Lucy and Daniel return home after a movie. They call for Heather, but she is not present. Neither of them has received any texts from her. Lucy believes she is about to get bananas. He tries to call Heather. At Shirat's, she recalls disposing of Heather's body before telling Nick and Maria that Faith has fallen asleep. They're glad she's home and want to help in any way they can. She is aware of the situation and apologizes for her behavior. She was in a difficult situation and fooled. She feels better than she has in a long time and appreciates their efforts to aid her. They're just delighted she returned. Maria asks what she did. Sharon, choking up, tells them they deserve to know the truth. She admits she lied to them because she felt overwhelmed by their regular checks on her. She was frightened of losing control because her mind was racing so fast. I did what I had to do, she exclaims. She's still not sure what happened, but it felt right at the time. This is why she confessed to Cassie. She paid a visit to her grave and discussed all that had happened since her death. Hearing it out loud forced her to take a close look at herself. She believed she'd learned to live with Cassie's death, but the guilt and resentment persisted. Nick argues she is not to blame. Sharon understands that logically, but not emotionally. That festered, and she took some nasty decisions. For the first time, she feels as if she is getting off a roller coaster. I feel steady, she says. She now knows what she needs to do. Nick believes that is a positive move and hopes she will contact her doctor. She already has. Sharon says that everything will settle in and return to normal. A phone starts ringing in her backpack. It is Heather's. Maria wonders whether that's a new ringtone. Sharon claims it's a reminder to take her medication and begins swallowing some. She tells them she's at home and will be okay. Everything they have told her has sunk in. They promise her that their assistance will continue. She tells them she is fatigued. Maria hugs her, relieved that she has returned home. Nick welcomes Sharon home and hugs her before leaving. Sharon, alone, takes Heather's phone and curses. That was a close one, huh? Cameron says as he appears. 
She wishes Heather hadn't come home. Why doesn't she remember what happened? He suggests she focus on not being caught. It's not time to give up. I complimented her on concealing the call and preventing location and tracking on the phone. She is concerned that Lucy and Daniel will continue to call, but he assures her that now is not the time to be sentimental. She decides to text them to make them believe Heather is still alive. He claims it should be true and hurtful. Back at Daniel's, he and Lucy ponder if Heather nailed her job interview. She tells her father that she is aware of how many mistakes she has made this summer. He admits that when he was her age, he made even more mistakes. He's certain she's learned her lesson. Lucy is relieved that her parents have reconciled. Daniel feels fortunate and tells her how pleased he and her mother are of her. They receive a text from Heather. Your mom is not coming home, he says. The text claims she's all right but was fed up with the Sharon issue and needed to leave town for a few days. Daniel writes back, asking where she is and inviting her to call. Lucy is concerned that this is entirely her fault and that her mother has left town to punish her. He informs her that if she wants to blame anyone, it should be Sharon. She explores the apartment and sees that an overnight bag is missing. Her father says they just have to assume she'll come back. But this is bizarre. Sharon has been all over the place and her family is concerned about her. Back at Sharon's, she informs Cameron about Daniel's text message and expresses concern that it may escalate and he may contact the police. Cameron believes it will pass, but she reminds out that she has publicly criticized that family several times. He describes her as the queen of tears on demand. All she has to do is switch it on and it will confuse everyone. They dispute over her desire to be free of him. She knows what she needs to do right now and does not need his support. He believes that the only way she can get out of this is with his help. There are things that must be done. She must own her responsibility for Heather's death. He declares that there will be no peace with Daniel alive. She proposes he leave town, which would solve everything. Cameron claims that's not enough. He says he deserves the calm she's been looking for, and that includes getting her hands filthy. You have already hurled the proverbial stone. Why not kill two birds with one stone? He suggests. So what do you guys think about this update? Let me know in the comments below. If you like my videos, please like and subscribe for more information. I'll see you guys next time.